when the resurrection of Jesus Christ is of the utmost importance. And it is in times and seasons of crisis and challenge that we really begin to understand the importance of resurrection season. To some, on the day in which Jesus rose from the dead, it was business as usual. They did not have an expectation for anything else to happen outside of the ordinary. And one thing I love about God is that even when we find ourselves in some of the most frustrating seasons of our lives, he has a unique way of coming to us when we least expect. And when we begin to really unpack the narrative that is resurrection, we begin to really understand the full essence of all that Jesus both came to do and to teach. We've really been building for the last uh, few weeks, few months, in the Lord's Prayer or the model prayer. And now we've come really to the end of this. And Jesus says something very interesting for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. I want you to look at somebody and tell them we've got something to praise him for this morning. Uh, because when we really begin to understand the essence of this particular part, if you look at the NIV translation or even the ESV translation, some of them don't include this latter part of the verse. But one of the major reasons why the latter part of the verse is so important and even so powerful is because some uh, translators would even argue and say that it did not occur, nor was it written. But as the church began to form and develop, they recognized that the end of this prayer needed a doxology. And I grew up in a, a somewhat traditional church background, so uh, sometimes when we would do certain prayers in church and we would say certain things, they would end them with what was called a doxology. It was basically a hymn of praise or adoration to God. Today we understand these uh, in various forms, but uh, they understood that there needed to be a benediction notice to this prayer. Someone came to the recognition and even the understanding that before they could even move forward, there needed to be a praise added to the prayer. And one thing I have discovered is that uh, those who have a prayer life also maintain a praise life. Look at somebody and tell them, those who have a prayer life maintain a praise life. I've even discovered, Mother Williams, that sometimes when I, I don't know what to pray, when I just begin to praise God for what he's already done, things begin to open up in my heart. Things begin to open up in my spirit. Sometimes I don't have language to pray. I don't even know what to say. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, that all he's done for me, something rises up on the inside of me and allows me to know I still got something to praise him for. I wonder if there's somebody here this morning that still has something to praise him for. You might not have all the stuff you wish you had. You might not have all the things you should have, but you still have a reason to praise his name. Look at somebody and tell them I have a right to praise him. It was J.I. Packer who said prayer and praise are like a bird's two wings. With both working, you soar. With one out of action, you are earthbound. But birds should not be earthbound nor Christians praiseless. So I've come to discover that the more I pray, the more I praise. That's why uh, even you'll, you'll find and discover in the Psalms that he gives us the garment of praise. For the spirit of heaviness, which allows me to understand that when I feel heavy the most is really when I need to give him the most praise. I discovered that I don't really need to praise God when I feel like it, but it's the times when I really don't feel like it. The times in which I have to push myself to get out the bed. Come on, somebody. When you have to push yourself to get out the bed and you really want to hit the snooze button again, that's when I really have to open my mouth because I sensitive, but when I am weak is when he is strong, so I praise him when I feel like it, I praise him when I don't feel like it, I praise him when things go well, and I praise him when things don't go well, that's why I understand the Bible tells us that everything that has breath, praise the Lord, somebody open your mouth right now and give him a shout of breath. Somebody open your mouth right now and give him a shout of breath. 
this message very quickly and not going to be long. Humbly. There are three things I want us to look at when we understand praise as it's connected to prayer. First of all, praise glorifies God. How many of you came to give him glory this morning? Praise glorifies God. Notice at the beginning of the prayer, he says, our father. And at the end of the prayer, he says, for thine is the kingdom. So I understand something very significant. I have the sympathy of a father, but I also have the sovereignty of a king. And that's why I can open my mouth and praise him. Because I understand he knows what it feels like when I'm in pain, but he's God enough to use the pain to push me into purpose. He knows what it's like when I'm going through stuff, but he knows how to supply my needs anyway. He knows what it's like when I'm down, and even when I'm down and don't know how I'm going to get out, he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I could ever ask or think because he is sovereign and he is God. Look at somebody and tell them I came to give him glory. I came to give him glory. I came to open up. God, but praise heals the wounds of my heart. Yes. Praise heals our hearts. Uh, it, it, it's almost as if when we are in moments of despair and challenge, when we praise God, it begins to heal the wounds on the inside of our heart. And during this particular moment, in this particular time, we begin to understand the essence of the resurrection narrative. They weren't excited. They were wounded. They were hurt. They were afraid because the one who made promises has now been killed. And they were looking and they had an expectation. But out of their expectation, they have come to the realization that maybe it all had not necessarily been true. For if it was, they would have all been standing by the tomb waiting for him to walk outside of it. But it's in moments of despair that we must cling to God the most. And as I've told you plenty of times, whenever things don't go right, we don't run from God, we run to God. And those of us we understand and recognize uh, it might not have happened the way I planned it or how I prepared it, uh, but he's still God anyway. Uh, I might not have got what I thought I needed uh, or what I should have needed, uh, but he's still God anyway. Is there anybody here this morning that can declare he is God? Praise glorifies God. Praise heals my hurts, but then praise fortifies my faith. Because it's in moments in which I don't know how things are going to happen that I really begin to praise him. And my praise is really a down payment for what's getting ready to come. Because I understand I don't have it in front of me right now, but God, I know you got something better stored for me. So if I don't get what I thought I should get, you're holding something even better for me. So I praise you in anticipation for what you've already declared I was tells our thanksgiving. So praise, hear me clearly, praise is really worry turned inside out. Uh, my, my wife has been, been teaching me how to wash clothes. I don't wash clothes well. I preach well, but I don't wash clothes well. Amen. My mother can tell you. Everybody can tell you. And so she, when I was getting a shirt yesterday and I was cleaning it, I sweat real bad. So she said, turn it inside out. Turning it inside out, and by the time we got finished with the clothes, the clothes were washed, and, and something dropped on me. Praise is worry turned inside out. Uh, it's when we get in moments of despair, we really want to worry, but that's really when we should worship Him. Because when we worship Him, we turn the problem inside out. Uh, look at somebody and tell them when I praise it. Uh, I'm turning that problem inside out. Uh, I dare you to put a praise on it right now. My 
As I close, we understand that Judah means praise. But every holiday in America has a message. So when I say the 4th of July, we understand the message is freedom. When I say Mother's Day, the message is mothers. When I say Father's Day, the message is fathers. When I say Good Friday, the message is the cross. But when I shout resurrection, Touch your 
not enough just to be free, but there needed to be a way of benediction. Watch this, notice, when they added this to it, it became the benediction. The benediction is a blessing. Therefore, resurrection, Easter Sunday, is the greatest benediction of all mankind. Because everybody else had died. But Jesus lives. Touch everybody you can reach and tell them he lives. 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 Join hands with someone. God bless you, my friend. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I pray that a word was spoken that transforms and changes your life. Please stay connected with us, www.globalfirenow.com. I'd love to hear from you. Expect greater.